For over a quarter of a century, the Kalik family has been wondering about the fate of their relative, who left home one day and never returned. Investigators, too, remain baffled, for not a single suspect has been apprehended in all that time. Patty Doyle, the mother of the missing Tara Kalik, cherished hope for the rest of her life that her daughter was alive. But as time went on, inconsolable grief clouded her judgment. Every girl on a bicycle passing by seemed like her daughter. 34 years have passed since Tara's disappearance, but she never returned home. Kalik's case is still open. In all these years, the police have only managed to find one piece of evidence, but even that has left many questions. What happened to the student, and is there any chance she outlived her mother? Tara Kalik was 19 years old at the time of her disappearance, and was incredibly organized and punctual. She was a sophomore psychology major at the University of New Mexico, and always planned her day carefully. On September 20, 1988, Tara was going to go for her usual morning bike ride and then play tennis with her boyfriend, Mark McCracken. At 9.30, Tara told her mother, Patty Doyle, that she was going to ride 56 kilometers on her favorite route around her hometown of Rio Comunes and would be back by noon. She usually rode with her mother, but that day, Patty refused to keep her company advising her to bring pepper spray instead. In the spring of that year, Tara found threatening notes left on her bicycle by unknown people on several occasions. She brushed them off, however, and instead of a means of self-defense, she brought along a player with a cassette tape of the band Boston. When Tara didn't return at 12.05 p.m., Patty sensed something was wrong and went looking for her. She drove her daughter's entire route and not finding her, immediately contacted the police. Tara was last seen on Route 47 at 11.45. Witnesses reported that a white pickup truck had been following the girl for some time, but no one saw either the accident or the abduction. It was impossible to determine whether the vehicle had anything to do with Tara's disappearance. The next day, two kilometers from Tara's house, they found the same tape. Not far from this place, there were bicycle tire tracks on the road. Later, the police found parts of Calix player scattered 30 kilometers east of town. Patty was sure that Tara was thus trying to point in the direction in which she had been kidnapped. However, despite efforts, neither the student's other belongings nor she herself could be found. The investigation even considered the version that the girl could have simply run away from home. Some media reported that on June 15, 1989, a woman from the city of Port Stain Town, Joe in Florida saw a girl similar to Tara in the company of two men. The eyewitnesses claimed that Kalika was doing their bidding. However, who these men really were is still a mystery. Curiously, on the same day, June 15, the only significant piece of evidence, a photograph, was found in the parking lot of Port St. Joe. A white van was known to be parked next to this find, with a mustachioed man in his early 30s sitting in it. Whether the photograph had fallen out of the car, no one could say, and searches for the vehicle and its driver led nowhere. The picture, taken with a Polaroid camera, showed a girl and a boy. The teens were lying on blankets and pillows in the van, with their mouths taped shut and their hands placed behind their backs. Patty identified her daughter by a scar on her leg that Tara had received in a car accident years earlier. Tara's sister, Michelle, was also convinced that the captive in the photo was her sister. However, law enforcement did not share their confidence. The FBI concluded that the photo was not Tara Kalika, but another girl. At the same time, employees of the British Scotland Yard, on the contrary, believed that it was Tara. Specialists from the Los Alamos National Laboratory could not give a definite answer. The point is that in 1989, Tara should have been 20 years old, and the girl in the photo looked at least four years younger. Patty continued to insist on his own, because next to the captive lay Calic's favorite book, My Gentle Audrina, by Virginia Andrews. Curiously enough, the cover of the book had a telephone number written on it. Because some of the numbers were illegible, there were 300 possible numbers, of which only 57 actually worked but checking them yielded nothing. Investigators who examined the picture wondered if it was a staged shot. 
What confused the cops was that the girl's hands were clearly not tied. Her shoulders looked quite relaxed and the skin around the teenager's mouths was not reddened, which meant only one thing. The duct tape was put on just for the sake of the photo. However, this question remained unanswered, although some law enforcement officials believed that the fear in the teen's eyes was real. Who the boy in the photo was is still unclear. On April 21, 1988, a nine-year-old boy, Michael Henley, went missing near the town where Tara lived. He was hunting with his father in the Zuni Mountains, but at some point fell behind and seemed to fall through the ground. Henley's parents thought their son had been captured by unknown kidnappers. The police again hesitated because the photo showed a teenager of 12 years old. However, in 1990, Michael's remains were found in the mountains. Forensics showed that his death was natural and not related to violence. Years later, two similar pictures were found in the Montecito Commune in California. One showed a dead girl with her mouth taped shut. The other showed a blindfolded victim sitting next to a man. Investigators provided Patty with the photos for identification. Doyle couldn't say with certainty whether they depicted her daughter. In 2003, Tara's boyfriend, Mark McCracken, was convicted of killing his wife. Law enforcement officials speculated that he may have also killed Tara, whom he had been dating before her disappearance. However, investigators found no evidence of that theory. In 2008, Valencia County Sheriff Ren Rivera in New Mexico claimed that he knew from the beginning what happened to Tara Kalik. The police officer claimed that the student was being chased in a white pickup truck by two teenagers. At some point, they accidentally hit her. In a panic, the youths took the girl's life and buried the body. Rivera said he could not name the perpetrators because without the body, it would be empty accusations. In 2009, a woman who called herself a psychic told investigators she knew Tara. She claimed they worked together at a strip club. The psychic said she allegedly had a vision that Tara was killed and buried somewhere in California. The police verified her words, but they were useless for the investigation. Also in 2009, David Barnes, sheriff of Port St. Joe, received two letters sent from Albuquerque. The envelopes contained pictures of a boy whose mouth had been painted over with a black marker. The photo resembled the same 1989 shot. However, the analysis of the images was inconclusive. The case of Tara Kalik's disappearance still remains open, but law enforcement is now considering the pictures as evidence. After moving to Florida with her husband John, Patty Doyle died in 2006 from complications from several strokes but she always thought of her daughter. Patty and John kept a bedroom for Tara, bringing gifts there for Christmas and birthdays. To date, the culprit behind Tara Kalik's disappearance remains shrouded in mystery. Will there be more clues? Will Tara be found? The disappearance of Tara Kalik remains one of the most mysterious cases in the United States. However, we will continue to report on high-profile crimes from different parts of the world, so expect more stories on our channel soon. You can support our channel by subscribing. See you soon.